Hi, it's Lee and welcome to The Tesla Economist. Although EV growth might not be what was promised for now, it is possible that Tesla can still double its profits next year. There are a lot of people bearish about Tesla, well always, and I like to hear where they're coming from too, to try and make sure I'm keeping objective. Of course, there are also many bulls too, and I like to listen to them even more. But some are still thinking 50% growth in 2024, as in around 3 million vehicles delivered next year. The most likely way this is possible is if Tesla ramp up 4680 cell supply and ramp Berlin and Texas. But even then, we're still well over half a million short, including the Cybertruck ramping going very well. Through my analysis, I don't really see any way how Tesla can hit 3 million in 2024. However, the stock price is not entirely dependent on Tesla ramping up production. Wall Street also cares about the financials and level of profit Tesla is able to generate. In addition to that, Tesla is not just a car company. There is finally some movement with the energy business and potentially starting a new Megapack factory, this month even. Right now, there is negativity out there about demand elasticity with Tesla, and this is mainly coming from Tesla dropping prices on the S and X, and FSD dropping in price for the first time. Of course, the bulls always rebut all this with the usual, it's Tesla's mission to transition the world, and Tesla's objective is to get as many cars on the road as possible, and Tesla still sell every car they make. Almost as if they've been brainwashed into contributing to some sort of charity, and have forgotten it is actually indeed an investment, that if goes well, it will facilitate an early retirement. I mean, we've all heard the same mantra so many times, and it doesn't really mean a great deal. I mean, even Legacy and Rivian sell every EV they make, even if it means they lose $100,000 per vehicle or more. Part of the reason Tesla's stock price is so high is that Tesla were able to sell every car they make with a huge margin, because the cost of Tesla EVs is so much lower than all the competition on a like-for-like -like basis. And this argument was actually first used to defend Tesla from consumers complaining about how expensive a Model Y cost. And the bulls would say, well, Tesla still sell every car they make despite such high prices. Now, the same argument is being used to explain why Tesla are not advertising their cars because demand is there as they sell every car they make. I don't think many people are even arguing that if Tesla did advertise and spent perhaps a quarter a billion a year on advertising in places that would educate new consumers as to the benefits of an electric car, then Tesla's sales would increase. And then due to the additional demand, Tesla would not need to lower prices or may even be able to raise prices. I mean, if GM are able to convince people to buy their cars, then surely Tesla can persuade consumers to go electric. But this is perhaps just short-term thinking. It will be just a temporary boost in profits and likely the stock price also. Short-term for perhaps six months or so, or maybe two years, until Tesla is much bigger and has Gen 3 in volume production and made some massive breakthroughs in FSD. So much that the stock will just rally by itself without any necessary intervention through activities like advertising. And if you want the stock price boosted in the meantime, that's just short-term perspective. Advertising is a bit like increasing the voting machine for Tesla's stock price, whereas in the long run, it's a weighing machine. And didn't you know, it's not good sport to be selling any Tesla shares before 2030. You'll make certain bulls very cross, and I'm sure you know who a few of them are. I mean, how dare you even consider selling any of your shares and doing what you want with your own investment? If you want to be a part of this community, then you need to commit until at least 2030, or you aren't one of us. Even if you've been holding for 10 years or so and are up to 20 or 50 times return already, that's not enough. You still have to wait to 10 exit one more time. Anyway, despite so few signs on how Tesla will increase supply and sales, and maybe no push advertising to educate people on EVs, we may still see some great profits on the way. Tesla do have two very popular models that nearly sell around 2 million a year collectively. So Tesla is updating these vehicles to increase demand that will increase the price and reduce the cost by finding more efficient ways of producing the cars and making them superior. Okay, we are all assuming that these Model 3 and Y updates will be a lower cost way of production. I mean, it's what Elon has been saying too. But they are certainly nice cars. The new Model Y will also look amazing and likely be in production in around nine months time. Some of the renders we have seen with a similar look to the Highland makes it look like a really nice car. And given that it is practically the most popular car in the world, 
then it is probably going to sell exceptionally well, especially judging by the new Model 3 popularity. There is hope that these new designs will be very popular and restore huge profits back to Tesla. And we'll see the same thing happen with the Model Y later next year. Anyway, if we take the Model Y as an example of what I'm referring to, well, if we use an ASP of $40,000 for the Model Y and a margin on 18%, then we have COGS per vehicle of $33,000. Then if Tesla can reduce the cost by 10%, it becomes about $30,000. If the new shape has enough demand and these extra features and more range, then the ASP may go from $40,000 to $44,000, i.e. a 10% price rise. That would then mean that the profit margin would become 33%. Do you see how crazy that is now? Up from 18%. That is a 15% increase. Okay, that's not quite double profits, but not far off. But anyway, that's gross profits, which I was obviously not talking about. Given the operating margin was just 9.6%, and if we saw a margin increase of 15%, then that would mean that that 15% gross margin would practically go into the operating margin. In other words, from 9.6%, might increase to around 24.6%, although we need to do exact maths to find out. But that is about 150% increase in profit. And that's not entirely true because we would have a higher ASP, so the profit margin is a percentage of a higher price too. Okay, but what if costs were just down by 5% and the price of the car only rose $2,000? Then it still means margin would increase by 5% which would mean that profits are up by about 50%, which still isn't bad. Plus extra sales, assuming some more ramping. Except it doesn't have to end there either. Now, I think the fact that Tesla is starting on the Megapack factory in Shanghai makes me bullish about potential battery supply. And I've discussed this many times. Essentially, the new batteries from this new CATL factory next door to Giga Shanghai will be used in the new Model Y, thus freeing up cells that can be used in Megapack factories. We're estimating about 70 gigawatt hours a year of more sales to go into energy. And if they can generate about $100 gross profit per kilowatt hour, then even if we only increase margin by about 5% for the Model Y and 3, then we still double profits. Of course, if margins have increased as much as people think, with costs down 10% and prices perhaps up 10% as well in some markets, then we would triple profits if we include energy but I'm not as bullish as the vast majority in the community. It seems a little bit too good to be true. Also, bear in mind that the Cybertruck is going to be pulling down profits for the most of next year too. So even if this is true, then we still won't actually see them in the financials. But I think once Tesla hit around maybe six to 7,000 Cybertrucks a month, then it's probably breaking even. Of course, Elon thinks they'll get to three times that rate by the end of the year. So if that was also achieved, then of course it will increase profits considerably more again. But as it won't be ramped to that level until the end of the year, then it may not be noticed much in the finances. If things go well, then it should contribute somewhat to profits in Q4. The margin of the Cybertruck could be amazing. We aren't quite sure yet. It's hard to know, but it should be the highest margin car. If the Cybertruck is $80,000 for the dual motor, of course before the tax credit, then there may be as much as $30,000 gross profit per vehicle when at volume production. I hope the dual motor price is lower than that because that is too expensive for the numbers that some are hoping for. Remember, the dual motor was advertised at $50,000. Sure, we've had inflation since and Tesla didn't know they'd get nearly 2 million pre-orders nor a $7,500 tax credit. So I think $80,000 probably is on the high side for a dual motor. Seventy dollars to $75,000 is probably about right. So nearly $62,500 after the credit, which isn't too hard off the initial $50,000 if we include everything else that has happened. Consumers should accept that price, and there's still room for some optional extras so that the price tag will still come under $80,000 for the tax credit threshold. Anyway, that would put Tesla at over $20 billion a year net profit, or a P ratio of about 40 at today's stock price. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.